already. So welcome everybody. Today we have Jung Yun and he will talk about higher derivative fermionic theories. So whenever you're ready, go ahead, Yun. Yeah, uh, I, I first I'd like to thank for the, this opportunity to present uh, our the work. And uh, I'm from the Asia Pacific Center for Theoretical Physics, APHTP, in Korea. And uh, I'm really happy to uh, give a talk today. And uh, today I will talk about uh, this higher derivative fermionic series. So I prepared uh, more than I planned. So it would over time, but I wish at some at the, around after like a uh, one hour, I will shorten a lot. So, and but uh, if you have uh, any question, uh, let me please ask immediately. And uh, okay. So probably you already have a uh, several like seminar on the higher derivative theories. So this uh, Ostrograsky instability is uh, very famous uh, uh, for the, this higher derivative theory. So usually uh, people say that this higher derivative, especially time deri higher time derivative uh, theory has a larger Hilbert space than we naively think. So usually it's not XMP, but uh, it has more than like uh, another for it, Y and Q and et cetera. And uh, this such kind of higher derivative theory usually suffer from the, this uh, instability or so-called like uh, the, or in other words, it's Hamiltonian is unbounded from below. So for example, when you some, some quantize, you uh, sometimes encounter with this type of the Hamiltonian so that uh, this uh, energy is not bounded below. So this instability is also, uh, Close related to the, this uh, non-normalizer vacuum. I will not talk about detail of the this bosonic theory because you already have a nice uh, seminar on there. So uh, also it's also related to negative non-state, etc. So you one might uh, uh, able to avoid one of the this uh, like uh, unbounded below energy or some non-normalizer vacuum problem or one of them, but uh, you cannot avoid all of them. So. If you're trying to leave, uh, avoid this one, you end up with uh, non-normalized vacuum and vice versa. So, so it's really problematic. Now, uh, we can ask, is it true in general in every field theory? So today I will discuss uh, this fermionic model. Uh, here, it's not that, it's not the case. It's uh, sometimes, it's an, not always, but there is uh, some possibility to have a nice uh, Hamiltonian unitary system. And then also, we usually uh, neglect uh, this path integral measure, but uh, this path integral measure can also sometimes resolve this kind of issue. But uh, let, me, let me, I will give the very, very simple model, and uh, you can easily uh, understand it. Probably this is a target to this graduate school level. So it will be very easy. Uh -huh. So how long is the first? I will discuss interest of fermionic uh, higher diversity toy model from the so-called TT body formation. And then I will discuss also higher derivative theory with quotation mark from the field ray definition. And then I will discuss uh, some symplectic fermion model. So first model, toy model from the TT body formation. So I let me explain some motivation, but the motivation is also very long. So you don't have to really, uh, I will not discuss detail, but uh, just I briefly explain why I begin to uh, study this toy model. So we usually consider the, some deformation of quantum field theory. Usually we consider the, this uh, relevant deformation of the, and then you, uh, you go to the from the UV to IR flow to IR. And then um, there are, are many UV theory can possibly flow to the same IR theory. But the, uh, you can imagine there are uh, irrelevant information from the IR to UV. But uh, if you see the previous slide, uh, the reverse direction is not unique. So this uh, is usually ill-defined. 
going to the this UV direction. So this uh, people used to say their irrelevant deformation is not so well defined on unlike uh, this irrelevant uh, deformation because they are infinite in many way. But uh, there is a very special uh, deformation uh, following the this very special flow. This and the flow equation is exactly given here. It's not really hard. RG flows, but they just follow, uh, follow the, some special flow. This called, uh, in the literature, people call the TT bar deformation because uh, on the right hand side, uh, there, uh, this uh, defines the 2D shape and the, on the right hand side, it's a determinant of the energy moment tensor. So this is 2D, so this is a determinant of energy moment tensor. And especially in the 2D shape, uh, it's uh, in the shift point, it's a t determinant of t uh, t energy moment is a TT bar, so so we call it TT bar. But uh, anyway, so we have but, a uh, question by Philip. Philip, yeah, you want... uh, a very quick question. On the left, of this equation, there's a lambda, and there's no lambda on the right. So lambda oh. is not is not either either the equation is not correct so, or lambda is not a space time index. So so, so lambda is the deformation parameter. Oh, okay. So, so this is deformed Lagrangian, and the, this energy moment tensor defined in the deformed theory. But lambda is so a that, and scalar. Yeah, scalar, just parameter. Ah, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just parameter. And uh, when I say shift, it means that the first order, so lambda zero, when the first, uh, the unperturbed, the undeformed theory is shift, then the first correction is a t, t bar because. Uh, yeah, CFT. But uh, anyway, this need not to be the uh, deformation of CFT. It defined in the of any 2D quantum field theory because uh, this is very universal because uh, if you have uh, some le uh, reasonable 2D quantum field theory, always you can define the, not always, but the mostly, you can define the energy moment tensor if there is uh, the asymmetry. Then the, this deformation is very uh, universal. So also there is just some non-elastic version. And then the, here, uh, this was uh, uh, proposed by Jamalochikov. And then the, he uh, gave a very, I mean, he said that uh, uh, this, if you follow the, this uh, deformation, for example, it has very nice uh, property. Uh, here in this talk, I will not discuss, but uh, for example, it preserved the, this deformation is integrable deformation and the energy spectrum is exactly known, et cetera. There it has very nice uh, property. But uh, when we say energy moment tensor, usually there are two energy moment tensor. One is weather current and uh, the other is metric variation. Uh, usually, we said uh, uh, it's the uh, same because uh, usually uh, it's the only deeper by the, this improved term. So that uh, we usually often said that uh, it's uh, the physical physics does not change it, whether you choose the metric like the energy moment tensor from the metric variation or the weather current. So if you choose it, maybe you can choose the metric variation, but the Problem is that the result seemingly is different. So here I deform the this two D three fermion, and here I deform the the Lagrangian with the noise current. So this is a nice result, and the, this Lagrangian exhibit very nice property that Jamroche point out, like the energy spectrum is very nicely determined and etc. But the other one which is deformed by symmetric energy moment tensor has this term. So as you see, it's a, uh, time, it's a quadratic in time derivative. So from its scalar field, it's usual, but it's from the for, point of view of the fermion, it's a higher derivative theory, right? So this leads to the, some fermionic version of ostracrastic instability, some problematic. So I so that's why I uh, start start to study the, this type of model. So I usually uh, working on the this TT body deformation, but uh, somehow. But the this Can I ask uh, model you a question is, about the previous slide. Yeah. So nice. What does nice mean? Nice means you can calculate the energy spectrum. That's what you said. Or yes. anything yes. else? Yes. And uh, when you evaluate, you can also quantize this Lagrangian. 
And then the, there is non perturbative calculation how energy spectrum is deformed. That is non perturbative known. And the perturbatively, you can check whether this gives the that result. And the perturbatively can confirm. We, we confirm it explicitly in that paper. But the, here, this uh, has at the uh, first order level, it's a, has, it has some problem. You will see. You can easily immediately, uh, immediately uh, guess that uh, because of the high order derivative, Hilbert space is bigger than before. So it's not deformation, it's just kind of a new, new degree of freedom just pop up. So that's the problem. A, a question, but if the, I may, a question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if, if I calculate this uh, boxed uh, 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 quadratic term in, the, in time derivative, uh, in the in the metric uh, energy momentum case, uh, when when I calculate it on the solutions of the equations of motion of the of the um, uh, original Lagrangian, or with respect to the deformed uh, equations of motion with res uh, equations of motion with respect to the canonical EMT, do, is, does it vanish or or not? This term again, uh... Uh, if I calculate the boxed expression. Uh -huh. On the equations of motion, the term in, say, on the original theory, does it vanish? Or if not, uh, if you calculate it on the equations of motions, uh, on the solutions of the equations of motions coming from the canonical mm -hmm. uh, deformation, does it vanish? No, no, this uh, does not vanish. So it uh, has a certain uh, influence. Of course, okay. this is because, yeah. I mean, okay. you will see it later, easily see. So, but uh, strictly speaking, it's very difficult to calculate the, this one because in the end, for the canonical calculation, first, what I can have to do is calculate the, this conjugate momentum and yeah. then by varying the, this Lagrange with the side up, but the, then on the right hand side, this one, and then you have to express the, like a scalar field, you have to express a, a side dot in some of other canonical variable, but the, it's hard to, uh, in, invert this uh, quadratic of the Grassmannian number. It's a, okay. you cannot like a one over psi plus psi minus. It's a, so that's why it's difficult. So in order okay. to understand what's going on, we start to study the another simple model in this paper. Here we this in this paper, this is totally nothing to do with uh, this higher derivative theory. But uh, we just studied uh, this uh, TT body formation fermionic theory with the uh, Kyungsun, this PH student, and the Pilchin Lee in Kias. And uh, for simplicity, we studied the uh, zero plus one dimension free fermion with this deformation. It's the same feature. So let's see what's the. So this uh, additional extra term is uh, uh, similar to the kinetic term of boson. And then uh, let's do the, this is very simple elementary level of uh, quantization. Then you can you first calculate the conjugate momentum. And then you have this one, like a scalar field. Then usually, uh, as usual, you express uh, psi dot and psi dot bar in terms of other canonical variable. So usually, if you lambda equal zero, this one represents a con constraint of the system. And the usual, that's why we usually in the fermionic theory, we only have psi and psi bar for the, in the phase space because the other phi and phi bar is eliminated by this constraint. But the, now this is not constraint anymore for the non-zero lambda. So like a scalar field, then you have to have all of them. And the, this is kind of double, fermion doubling, but the, it's a kind of doubling, but the, it's different from the doubling problem in the lattice. It's just the phase space is doubled. And then next step is for the quantization. I mean, the, we have this canonical anti-commutation relation from the previous slide. I mean, previous uh, like a uh, phase space. And then next one is uh, we wanna express in terms of oscillator. And uh, as usual, we find uh, this kind of linear transformation between the some the, between the this phi and psi to the b and c. And uh, it turns out that you have a can express in terms of these two oscillator, but uh, there is uh, some kind of a uh, one parameter family of transformation. 
And uh, actually, just one parameter is uh, later it turned out that it's related to the whole group of transformation generated by this uh, one, but uh, for now, it's not that important. And then it's very interesting because uh, you cannot uh, avoid this kind of oscillator. So B, this is a B, B, the anti-commutation of the B is standard, but the anti-commutation of C is unusual. So usually in the bosonic theory, when you have this kind of expression, you exchange the, for example, A and A dagger, and then you observe this minus one. But here, you cannot do that. You cannot observe this one by change the CNC dagger and also other canonical transformation. Okay. And then you from the previous Lagrangian, you can calculate the Hamiltonian and the express in terms of a canonical variable. And then you can, using the, this uh, transformation, you can also express in terms of B and C. This is the result. And the uh, here, theta is uh, just a vulnerable parameter, that real parameter that I mentioned. So now- Can we not, we can sorry, add, sorry to interrupt. Can we not just multiply the Cs by I? Then it then, will have uh, a plus on the right-hand side. Then there is uh, some, you have to already be careful about the, this uh, conjugate or this kind of thing whether it's a conjugate relation between the C and C dagger and so on. You can do that. I mean- You can define, define any conjugate you want, no? Yeah. Yeah, but the- uh, Can I comment? Um, you're, yeah. you're presupposing that you have a, con a quantity called C dagger. And that means that you think that there's a relation between pi plus I psi bar over two and pi bar minus I psi over two. But- what I think Andre is, is, is leading towards is you really want to define B dagger, B dagger as the PT conjugate of B and not as the Hermitian conjugate. And then you can do what, what Andre just said. Andre. Yeah, so in, in the end, it's related. Yes, I agree. So in the end, you can define the, the other C, like you always choose the, some other definition of the this is let's say C, and then you define like a C dagger, other j, something like a, in later I use the j, then you will end up with the same one. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, there is a, like a, in the literature, like a, for example, in the symplectic fermion, there is a similar like a discussion. But uh, for now, I, here, what I'm trying to do is I just follow the, I consider it as like a perturbation of the free from the free theory. And the, I trying to keep the this uh, Hermitian dagger of the free theory. So that's why this dagger is uh, a dagger of the free naive dagger. So that's why this is just starting point, but in the end, it, as you said, it changed. And uh, then the Problem is that you can ask whether this Hamiltonian is Hermitian or not. Then the, you you can see that the naively with naive dagger it looks like a Hermitian because every layer and that is Hermitian. But the, it's interesting to solve the, this equation. So uh, now if you have two students, uh, you can give the these two problems separately. To the part, you can give the, this Hamiltonian and ask him to uh, diagonalize that Hamiltonian with the, by calculating this matrix element and uh, diagonalize it. And for the Lisa, you give the, this Lagrangian and uh, evaluate the partition function at the finite temperature. Of course, uh, uh, imposing the intimate boundary condition. And uh, it's very easy problem. And the next day, they will get uh, this different answer. Of course, uh, they didn't make any mistake. So Bart has this type and this definitely different. And uh, interestingly, this uh, Bart, Bart result is uh, all real energy energy for, for all value of M and Lambda. On the other hand, Lisa's result can be complex for certain M, M Lambda. So now, if uh, we think this is a Hermitian, if you, have, if you 
assume that this, uh, I mean, or you can, if you answer that uh, this Hamiltonian is a Hermitian, then you would think uh, the part is correct because the part has a real energy. However, there is uh, some problem of this, uh, uh, this model. So we have this kind of oscill oscillator, uh, the anti-commutation relation. And then if you calculate that this uh, norm of the dispersed excited states, then you have a negative norm because of the using this uh, anti-commutation relation, you will have minus negative norm. So this has a negative norm states. So this is very similar to the Ostra-Graski instability of the Bojonic case. So that some part, some case, uh, if you're trying to change something, then the, you end up with a negative norm state. So you might say that oh, maybe this model is a, path a pathological, some thick. But the, maybe it's too early to conclude that because uh, uh, pe people define some kind of new operator, like uh, some operator J, which is defined in this way. So this is a basically number operator. This is very similar to the this minus one to the F in the supersymmetry, but uh, it only involves C. So that uh, in flip the C, only C, but uh, it's uh, B, oscillator B is intact. And then you define the new, new J inner product by inserting the J operator here, like a, it's similar to the supersymmetry. And then uh, if you calculate the J inner product of the first excited state, it's a positive because if you here insert J here, it flip and then the, it, it flip the sign of C minus and then by using the anti-commutation, it's the same norm as uh, the vacuum. So, uh, so this J norm in, the, in, in general ha, ha, looks, I mean, has positive non-negative uh, norm. So you might say that, oh, this is kind of ad hoc. By changing the, this inner product by hand and uh, you're trying to save the theory, but the, let's see whether it's uh, ad hoc or not. We, in the paper, we found that actually this J norm is correct norm. It's not artificial ad hoc, but uh, it's really like uh, uh, this J norm is consistent with the passing their formulation. So what I mean by that is that uh, when you define the theory, you may define theory in the path integral. And then we know that path integral is related to operator formalism. And then we usually, uh, this inner product is uh, given, but uh, in this case, it turned out that you have to using the J norm is correct norm. It's not the, this uh, uh, ordinary norm is uh, inconsistent with the path integral, but the, the J norm is consistent. You can show that, like uh, for example, when you compare the dispensing integral and the operator formalism, you usually calculate that this uh, tra transition amplitude. This is we stud we study in the graduate course level, like of uh, quantum mechanics and so on. So you calculate this one, and then you in you con you study that this uh, uh, you consider the the uh, the, the infinitesimal lattice uh, discrete time slice. And then you insert the, this complete relation into the, this each time slice. And then you uh, match with the, this uh, path integral formalism. That is a usual basic uh, like a class uh, uh, exercise. But uh, here, the difference is that the, is the, rep, the expression for the, this complete relation. Because of the, this negative norm or anti-commutation of C, Completeness relation should have this minus here. Or you can absorb this one into here, or you can rewrite on here, J here, insert J. And then you have to insert this completeness relation into the each time slice. And then you work out in the end, you will realize that this path integral is consistent with the operator formality on the left-hand side with the insertion of J. So that's why uh, we try uh, we collect, uh, we prove that uh, this uh, operator part is consistent with path integral. Of course, uh, if you you can define your theory in the operator formality with naive norm, then it, it's also some theory with negative norm, but uh, it would give the some different path integral prescription. So it's not at all. It's really uh, the correct inner product. So. Uh, 
So that means uh, now Lisa is correct. Lag I mean, the Lisa's calculator from the Lagrangian and the, she is correct. So from the operator formula, you can see the Lisa result by using, the, when you calculate this uh, uh, matrix element, previously you using the naive norm, but you have to using the J inner product by inserting J. And then you calculate this uh, matrix element and the diagonalize it, and then you end up with exactly match with the Lisa's result. Or you can just solve the, this uh, uh, linear equation, and then you also, uh, without inner product, then you can also obtain the, this Lisa's result. So, so Lisa's result is correct, but the, there is some problem. Lisa's result has, uh, uh, energy could be complex when lamp, for m lambda is less than minus one yeah, because of square root. So what happened is that uh, to see that this is related to the, the previous question. So when we define that this uh, Hermitian adjoint, uh, the, this uh, usual dagger is a naive dagger. So the correct inner product is J inner product. Uh, so you should define new J Hermitian adjoint in this way. So which is consistent with this J norm. Then when you say operator is Hermitian or not, this should be with respect to the, this J Hermitian adjoint. So that the O is a Hermitian, J Hermitian, when, if and only if, uh, yeah, when this relation is a hold. So from the, this point of view- Philip, uh, there's a question. A, a very quick one. Go, go back to where you said you had a negative energy. Um, yes. Is M positive? Because if lambda is if lambda is negative, then E three is already negative. Uh, lambda is negative. Yes, and I assume that uh, here for simplicity, I consider the positive. It doesn't matter the positive or negative, but uh, accordingly, yeah. The important thing for the this complex or real energy value is uh, m lambda is important, not individual. Energy right. could be negative or positive, it depends on lambda, but- uh, no, no, but if, it what I'm asking is this, if lambda is negative, then E3 uh -huh. is negative, and you're going e to go three. down the chain, each E3 would be negative, and you probably yes. finish up with an energy spectrum that's unbounded from below. Ah, you, this lambda is just some kind of deformation parameter. Yes. So, so uh, you will see that uh, when lambda is negative, then the, I mean, if given lambda, it's uh, finite. It's not the, like a, the fermion is uh, like a finite dimensional space, Hilbert space. So only four states exist. So oh. of course, when you do take a lambda to be in the minus infinity or minus zero, ah, you mean the, when it goes to the minus, I mean, when lambda goes to zero, you are worried about that, right? Well. You mentioned a moment ago that you were concerned that you would have an Ostrogrodsky instability. But if you're telling uh, me but, that the energy spectrum's finite, it uh -huh. has a finite number of elements, then there's no Ostrogrodsky problem. Ah, so that's why, uh, uh, strictly speaking, I'm using the quotation mark. It looks like a negative norm at yes. that moment. But, uh, in When I say Ostrogrodsky instability with the quotation mark means uh, it's uh, at at that stage, it looks seemingly looks like a similar, but it's different. Yeah, essentially, I don't mean the instability. So, sorry mm -hmm. for confusing. Yeah, no, here no uh, instability. Okay. Uh, but uh, this is uh, not um, so. This is just uh, for simplicity. Uh, instead of uh, sometimes it's inconvenient to inserting J operator into the in inner product when you define the J inner product, but uh, you can define the uh, U bra state with double bracket. So this uh, cat state is the same as uh, with a single bracket, but uh, when you define the bra, you define bra with respect to the J dagger. So so that uh, then in this way, you just to calculate the overlap of the this uh, of the double bracket naturally give the this j inner product so uh, when you if you're using the this double bracket you 
can just forget the J in, insertion of J. It's, just, it's more similar to the this bi-orthogonal state in the PT symmetry. So that's uh, what I want to point out. And then now go back to the Hamiltonian. According to the, this looks like an, with naive dagger, it look, looks like a Hermitian, but uh, because of this term, it's not the J Hermitian because uh, it's invariant on the, under the dagger, action of dagger, but the, when you act on the J, it flips the sign of, uh, because it's linear in C, it flips the sign. So it's not the J Hermitian. So Hamiltonian is uh, not J, it's not Hermitian. So it's not that surprising to have a complex energy. So in general, the spectrum should be complex because uh, Hamiltonian is not Hermitian. However, now uh, it's uh, more, in, I mean, surprising that it has real energy value like a PT symmetric. For example, when for M lambda is greater than minus one, energy is real, even though Hamiltonian is non-Hermitian. So it is a point is uh, now unlikely, I mean, surprising point. Then now, if you see that it's Hamiltonian, you can ask the set tau was a kind of parameter when you uh, map from the canonical variable to the B and C, then why not choosing the set tau in a way that uh, this term, crossing term vanishing. So that that solution is here. This is the solution for the, this vanishing this term. And then the rest of the Hamiltonian becomes simply here. So now the Hamiltonian is not only a Hermitian in the naive dagger, but also it's a J Hermitian. So that this should have a real energy value. So you can see here the solution. This is not always possible. So this on the right hand side, this is this curve. The tangent hyperbolic function is only defined between the one and minus one. So only when the this range, uh, this range of the uh, m lambda has this this solution. So that this uh, special value exists only when the this. Uh, for m lambda is greater than minus one, this is exactly uh, same condition for the real energy spectrum if you see here. So that means if there is a theta, this is actually coming from the Bogolubov transformation, but uh, you can say if there exists Bogolubov transformation, which make a uh, system uh, looks like a J Hermitian, then uh, energy, it has uh, uh, real energy. Otherwise, this system has complex energy. And then you can also ask uh, what happened uh, uh, when we take a lambda goes to zero. So as lambda goes to zero, this Lagrangian going back to the ori ordinary fermion. So it should really produce the ordinary fermion. But uh, if you see here, what happened? So from the Hamiltonian, it looks like a still two oscillator, but if you expand in the small lambda, so this is finite, B oscillator is finite. But if you see oscillator, uh, this is now uh, become infinity. So it depends, now, yeah, I agree that you have to be careful of the sign, whether it's a negative infinity or positive infinity. So that uh, here you have to be careful so that uh, here, in this point of view, I let's say lambda is negative. Lambda is negative. So that uh, this will energy goes to the diverge so that uh, it's decoupled from the spectrum. When lambda is positive, but uh, goes to zero, that means it's negative, go to the negative infinity. But uh, let's say you define the, the you have a lot to have a, like a shift of the energy, like a vacuum energy, then the, like a Fourier plus one over lambda, then this one, uh, become the diverge, but the, this become the finite, something like that. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yes, so you can uh, deal with such kind of a uh, tech tree. And then, so in the end, uh, in either case, you can de 
this uh, oh, the extra degree of freedom decouple and uh, you and you can end up with uh, this uh, uh, free fermionic theory. So far, is there any question? Because uh, yeah, if not, let's go to the next section. So this is a kind of a toy model which we uh, maybe maybe I have it. a comment at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah your, sure. your system in terms of B's and C's, you could express it in terms of X and Y, and then you have a system of coupled harmonic oscillators. And that has been treated in the literature quite extensively. And it's known that this can be mapped to two decoupled, just standard harmonic oscillators. Yeah, this- You mean Fermi oscillator? Yes. But these are fermions. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah, that, oh, that's, I see. but the bosonic case has been dealt with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Bosonic case, uh, there is, I, I know, huge literature, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this, uh, we net, the, we studied this one because it appeared in our TT body formation, so, because uh, we, at that time, we didn't know that this fermionic, so this just work. So this is uh, uh, another work, so, this, I will not talk about the uh, instability, but uh, I just uh, talk about, so that's why I also using the quotation mark, you will see why. So this work is also some part of the ongoing uh, work. So this is just one simple, one small section to explain some other things. So also this paper is nothing to do with uh, higher derivative theory, but uh, this is more like a TT body deformation and the broken symmetry. But uh, at some point we uh, we need it. So there is an equivalent theorem in the past, uh, actually it, in the quantum field theory, EQFT. So which that means that uh, uh, you, in the past integral, uh, you can have uh, many field rate definition of the field, but uh, the physics, should not change it, like S matrix or correlation function should not depend on the field right definition. So that is uh, very makes sense. And this is called like uh, in the past, in the long time, I real, recently realized it called the equivalence theorem. So now let's do the simple exercise. Let's consider the free color field. And then let's say, uh, I wanna study the, this kind of a field right definition some crazy field definition. No one will using this uh, field definition, but let's try it. And uh, you immediately obtain that is higher derivative theory. But uh, according to the equivalence uh, theorem uh, in quantum field theory, uh, this higher derivative theory also sh should also describe a free scalar field theory because it's just a field definition. Then, you can ask uh, this, uh, this uh, pre scalar field theory also has uh, this uh, instability. The answer, you can easily expect that the answer is no, because uh, this is already I studied in long time ago. So many people already have a nice paper. So I just, uh, this is kind of a review. So for the, also for this explanation, I also go to the, this uh, fermionic theory because it was simple for, for us. And uh, it also appeared in our TT body formation. So that's why we did. And then to see the, this kind of behavior, the, uh, uh, understand the, 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 what happened, then the, let's consider the, this uh, strange field of definition. So starting from here, free fermion, and then this rate definition, of course, uh, uh, it does not respect the, this complex structure. Previously, you can say that the uh, psi and psi bar is complex conjugate each other, but uh, here I ignore this complex uh, structure, but uh, let's do that. And then the, you will obtain the, this kind of uh, Hamiltonian, and then you can see that it's also higher derivative term. And then you can expect that it also has a larger Hilbert space, uh, larger Hilbert space. So immediately you can see that in, independent of the, this uh, like uh, instability, it has uh, like a uh, larger Hilbert space than the original Hilbert space. So something, some physics is changed, seemingly changed. So that is a problem. 
So you can ask, uh, then what is wrong with this type of the field definition? So let's see the this uh, more detail. So usually here, this is uh, this, uh, what I said. So usually this uh, uh, free fermion, because of this are uh, constrained the phase space is, uh, uh, this one is killed. So you only have uh, psi and psi bar in the, but the here, if you have this one, there is no constraint because the system give, does not give the constraint so that the phase space is uh, this full. Uh, you have a full uh, variable in the, your phase space. Then the, that was a really problem. The resolution of that problem is uh, uh, you pro probably most many of you already expect the answer is the Jacobian uh, in the on, in the this path, uh, in the this uh, uh, field definition. So under the this field definition and the Jacobian appear as a path integral measure, and the, that play a very important role. So this is a usual like a. Uh, uh, appear it's the same as uh, change of variable in the integration, but the Bojoni case it is very trivial. But the Fermioni case uh, you already have to be careful of the Jacobian, the position of Jacobian. And the uh, one you can do is that uh, you can exponentiate the, this Jacobian to the the uh, Lagrangian. So you, for the Bojoni case, uh, you're using the this uh, uh, Fermion. Post as usual, you exponential Jacobian to the action and uh, you can work up. Or for me, any case, you exponentiate the uh, Jacobian with the this uh, uh, some auxiliary boson, and uh, you can obtain. And then this uh, uh, total action uh, has uh, some BRS symmetry. This actually turned out that this it's, you can easily ima imagine that uh, this BRS symmetry is nothing but uh, generated by field level definition. So that uh, like a gauge theory, BRS symmetry coming from the, this gauge, gauge transformation. This also involved with uh, some ambiguity or freedom to have uh, to do the perform that is field level definition. So you can also show that. And uh, in our example, I will show that explicitly how this uh, re reduce the or re reproduce the original Hilbert space. So you have this uh, uh, deformed or change the Lagrangian, and uh, you exponentiate the Jacobian by using the this bosonic uh, field. And then it has a BRS, this BRS symmetry, and then you can evaluate the BRS charge here. And then it turned out that the same Lagrangian, this is the exact same Lagrangian, can be also obtained from the free, free Fermion theory by different field rate definition. Previously, I field rate defined psi, but now you can also field rate define, definite, uh, redefine the psi, psi bar. And up to total derivative, you obtain the same Lagrangian. Then this field rate definition also uh, give give the, this kind of another other PRS symmetry and uh, the corresponding PRS charge is here. Then rest of the name is just canonical uh, computation. You evaluate the conjugate moment of the fermion and the boson, and then you quantize it. Of course, uh, you have to use uh, some Dirac bracket, but in the end, uh, after Dirac bracket and uh, go to the quantum level, uh, then you obtain this one. Then, as before, in the same procedure, you can also transform the B and C oscillator and the A oscillator. This I just, just almost same, so I jumped. So, roughly speaking, gamma and gamma bar go to the A A bigger, and uh, some linear combination of the this eta and phi give the B and C. And uh, oh, the Hamiltonian for arbitrary set is complicated, but uh, as before, if I choosing the from specific value of set, you can express uh, Hamiltonian in the this simple form. And in this case, uh, you, for all variable and lambda, and lambda, you can always find the real set. So there is no such a problem, like a complex energy or this previous, there is no such a previous problem. 
and then uh, record this uh, this BRS charge. And then it turns out that this Hamiltonian also can be expressed in this way. So there is two questions. First question is uh, whether Q and Q bar is a Hermitian conjugate each other. You can you already know it, the answer because I already give the uh, same same question. And the related question is uh, whether Hamiltonian is bounded below or not. From this point of view, this is bound should be bounded from above because of negative a degree. A. Ah, just uh, let's say assume the lambda is positive for simplicity. But here, this is more like a uh, supersymmetric like a discussion. And uh, if Q and Q bar is uh, conjugate each other, this should be positive definite as usual in the supersymmetry. So it's a kind of contradict, but uh, as you can expect that uh, this because of the this C, this uh, commutation, you have to introduce a new inner product and uh, you have to, the correct inner, uh, this Hermitian conjugate is a J dagger, not the naive dagger. So now they are not conjugate, but uh, they are related by negative because of C, linear C. So it, you should using the J dagger and uh, if, give the minus sign here. So it's not Hermitian, but it's like a, do we call it anti-Hermitian something like, um, not anti-Hermitian, but uh, yeah, something like that. This, just uh, this relation. And then now it's uh, consistent because if you evaluate uh, this kind of overlap of some certain state psi, and uh, if you calculate J inner product, and then you will be using the previous uh, uh, relation, you can realize that uh, it's negative definite. So that uh, it, this is uh, actually negative definite so that uh, it's uh, bounded uh, uh, from above. So it's a consistent. But uh, now let's talk about the spectrum. So usually you can consider the bulk space, like uh, it's because of a bosonic, it's an infinite dimension. But uh, you can de demand the physical state is annihilated by Q and Q bar because this is kind of uh, coming from the ambiguity. The, this using the BRS, I mean, should, physical state should be invariant under, under, under the, this Q. And then the, the only state which is invariant is these two. And the, they are exactly matched with the spectrum of the uh, free formula. Also, you can, it's just, Usually it's not the BRSD cohomology because uh, I demand that both this one is eliminated by Q and Q bar, but uh, you can also uh, demand that uh, the state, the BRSD cohomology with only with Q, then you can also obtain the same uh, result. So this, so the conclusion for the this section is that uh, so. Uh, so lesson for this one is that uh, even though this looks like a high higher derivative, uh, this field definition might give the lead to the this uh, higher derivative theory. But uh, because of Jacobian ill rescue, or in other words, if you have uh, some higher derivative theory, and if you choose the uh, measure very properly, then sometimes you have uh, uh, you don't have a, a problem of the. And then also you define demand some like a BRS some symmetry, then you don't have a, this uh, instability problem. And uh, let's go to the next uh, uh, the final section. So I have time. I will quickly summarize. It's uh, almost uh, the mechanism is uh, the fin uh, the uh, the detail is the same. So I just quickly uh, explain. So in 2D CFT, central charge is a very good indicator of the unitarity. So when we said the central charge is positive, uh, the theory could be unitary on, or I mean, strictly speaking, like uh, when C C central charge is negative, uh, the CFT is non-unitary. That is correct statement, yeah. So we often say this one, but uh, you can have uh, some laser question. Is it really true? Negative central charge always imply non-unitarity. So let's see whether there is counter example. 
we found a counter example is uh, uh, symplectic fermion. So there is uh, many motivation of the, this uh, history of the symplectic fermion. It appears as like a curiosity. The first paper title is curiosity about the, this negative central charge. So people just uh, in just uh, in my impression just uh, mathematically like a mathematical curiosity on this type of the model. But the later it or, or survive as uh, some holographic model due to the uh, digital space. So there was some proposal uh, that the 3D symplectic fermion is due to the higher spin gravity in the digital space. So, so at that time I study, I was in the PhD, so that's why I studied that. So that's why I was interested in this kind of symplectic fermion. And uh, here I don't talk, I will not talk about the, this uh, uh, holographic at all. I just focus on the symplectic fermion only. So this is just motivation. So this, uh, uh, this discussion is work on the, this paper. And uh, we consider the two-dimensional Euclidean uh, symplectic fermion uh, with the, this anti-boundary condition, anti-boundary condition. And the uh, symplectic fermion is a kind of a name. The easiest name, is, I mean, the more intuitive name is anti-committing scalar. That's the word. So this is anti-committing some Grassmannian number, but it's color. You have it. And then, you can just quantize it. It's just a usual procedure. And then you have this kind of uh, oscillator. It's the same, have a minus sign here. And uh, it's the same, uh, same story. So the, because of anti-commutation, because of this anti-commutation relation, you naively you would have a negative norm, but it can be cured by this J inner product. But the, uh, this and the, this J inner product is, uh, or you can also prove that it's consistent with the passing type of Bowman region. So it, this theory has a positive norm. And then you can also prove that the energy eigenvalue is near and the part is bounded below. Of course, there is uh, some infinite uh, ground state vacuum energy, but uh, up to that vacuum energy, it's, uh, uh, Bounded, bounded below. And then because it's a free theory, you can say it's unitarity because it, here I'm, when I say unitarity is a time, under the time evolution, it's uh, evolve unitarily. So this is unitary theory. But uh, it's known that uh, it, this model has a negative center of charge. You can prove it. This is just simple exercise because it's just almost same as a free scalar field. And then you, for example, you can also obtain, get the, this answer from the, this OP, or you can explicitly calculate the Virasara generator and the calculate the explicitly this Virasara algebra with the, this C and B uh, anti commutation relation. And then you also obtain the central charge is minus two. So, it, there is no doubt, a central charge. But as you know, this model has negative central charge, but, the, but the, it has positive J norm. It's kind of contradict with the well-known uh, theorem. So what's the, what, what, what's the wrong with this kind of well-known theorem? Here is a, a very simple, yes, question. <laughs> Yeah, the, the theorem that you have a negative norm means you have a negative Dirac norm, not that you have a negative inner product of any form. And the theorem is thought of as being general because it's presupposed a priori that you always use the Dirac norm. Dirac norm means, what do you mean by Dirac norm? Can you, Just uh, uh, bra, the bracket, the, the, the overlap of the state with its Hermitian conjugate. Yes. Yeah, that's the point. I will explain that. Yes. Yeah, here, this is a slide that I, yeah. So let's see. Uh, so you, this is a usual proof for the theorem. You, uh, people, you are interested in the, this norm of the, this uh, descendant state, and the, you consider uh, this inner product, and the, using the Pilastro algebra, you obtain this expression. 
And the, when central charge is negative for sufficient uh, a large n, sufficiently large n, then the, this is negative. Then the, this uh, descendant has negative norm. That was a usual proof for the this theorem. But the, what's the difference? So as I said, this uh, you should using the this uh, J Hermit this uh, adjoint. And then for the this consistent for the this uh, bra and cat, you have to using the this uh, J dagger. And then it's interesting. Usually uh, in the CFD, Ln and the L minus N is related by Hermitian adjoint, but uh, this case it's not. It's not the J Hermitian adjoint because of there is a linear term in C in the Ln when N is non-zero. So because of that, uh, if we take uh, this uh, J norm of the, this one, or probably you, when you say Dirac norm is this uh, usual like correct norm, then what you get is uh, you have to have this kind of J dagger here. And then you obtain this one. If you really express them, then you cannot use the Birosera algebra anymore, unlike here, because of J. So that uh, it's kind of loophole of the original proof. So that uh, it's okay. It's, uh, not inconsistent, just uh, this uh, original proof cannot be applied to this kind of system because of this, uh, the bra and cat is uh, some different and the dagger is uh, somewhat different. So, so this kind of uh, kind of, uh, is a counter example of the, this uh, well-known proposition. What, what algebra do you get for the L daggers? Uh, with the uh, L? The L, I, the L daggers, the L satisfy the standard Verasero algebra. So what do you get for the L daggers? Between L dagger, you mean the- Yes. So between and dagger, I think it's the same because from the L and the LM, you can take a J dagger, then you can have, a, on the right-hand side, you also have a, M minus M, L, N plus M, J dagger, and the uh, central charge. Term, probably. But the maybe interesting part is uh, this one. I didn't have a concrete answer for that, but the, maybe it's interesting. What's oh. the algebra? Okay, thank you. So, um, this is, uh, I because I have uh, two minutes, I just uh, shortly comment on that. So it, because it's uh, interesting. So you know this, uh, you can calculate the entanglement entropy of the CFD2, and it's proportional to the central charge. But uh, now this uh, simplex formula, you may say that, oh, central charge is negative. Uh, this right-hand side is negative. Uh, it's uh, something that doesn't make sense because entanglement entropy, uh, in the unitary theory, the entanglement entropy should be positive by definition. Rho is a uh, is usual like uh, uh, the uh, density matrix of the unitary, then this should be positive. But the, on the right hand side, it's negative. It's something st strange. But the, it turned out that the central charge, which appear in the calculation of the entanglement entropy, is effective central charge, which means that uh, here there is some literature, but I quickly said that the central charge is C minus there is. A, Usually, the minimum conformal dimension is uh, zero, which is the component dimension of vacuum. But uh, when central charge is negative, there is uh, uh, some other the primary which has uh, uh, of which the conformal dimension is less than zero. So that you the effective central charge means that C minus uh, twenty four times the minimum conformal dimension. And uh, in the this symplectic uh, fermion case, it's one. So for example, there is also other example like uh, yeah, Li Yang model when central charge is negative, but the effective central charge is positive. So that the uh, entanglement entropy is uh, also okay in this ca case at least. And uh, this part is a uh, question. Yeah. Uh, and if you define your uh, uh, density matrix rho uh, uh, with the metric J, it, would that be equivalent to uh, having an effective central charge? Metric I mean, J? 
Yeah, well, Psi, Psi, Bra, Psi, Psi, Cat, something. You, ah, you mean the, when you say it is three? Yeah. So use use uh, the J bra instead of. Uh, yeah, you should uh, using the J. Otherwise, the, the oh. yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Or when you calculate this kind of trace, you if you're using the, this double bracket notation or by orthogonal basis, uh, you don't have to worry about the insertion of J. It's just uh, this uh, double bracket or by orthogonal will automatically take care of the insertion yeah, but, of J. But, is this a way, a quick way to define this effective uh, central charge? I mean, for in in some. Uh, I didn't calculate in that way. Like uh, in the I because in the this uh, shift two calculation, I don't know how to evaluate uh, genuinely uh, mm -hmm. entanglement entropy from the operator format. Usually, what I'm doing is the going to the replica uh, tree. And then in the path integral and uh, using the twist operator, that is a way that I know how to calculate the integral moment entropy. But uh, using the operator formalism, uh, strict speaking, I don't know. Maybe as lattice model, maybe I can like uh, some think of, but uh, here, I mean, formally you can think of it, but the uh, practical calculation is, uh, I don't know. But okay. uh, I expect that, uh, yeah. Thank you. And, uh, how much time can I have more? How much do you need? Uh, it depends on, maybe I can. I mean, uh, in principle, we use the time. So, and some uh, people are leaving already. So if, if you I think. can sort of wrap it up in 10 minutes, I think you can yeah, keep the I audience. Read it. Just uh, within five, uh, five minutes. So there is a very interesting structure, so-called alpha vector. Uh, so I didn't give the explanation, but that there is a vulnerable transformation when you define the BNC. And this is the, the vulnerable transformation on the simplicity formula. And the, this one is very interesting. It looks like a Hermitian in the naive sense, but the, it's not J Hermitian. But the, it's more like a, it's a naively, it's a, the naive Hermitian, but the, in the dagger, it gives a minus sign here. And the alpha is uh, this all of parameter. So it all it flip the parameter alpha. So that uh, this uh, transformation generate uh, this kind of type of the transformation. And uh, it's very useful to define quantize the system. And uh, it's not important. Uh, but the, uh, Interesting part is that, uh, like uh, in usual black hole, you probably remember that, that there is a cross cut vacuum, and in the black hole, you have a, you can define the Schwarzschild vacuum and the Unu vacuum or cross cut vacuum, and uh, they are related by this Borov transformation. Here, you can also think of the original night with some, some given vacuum, and then you can also consider the Borov transformation. And then the, you can define this kind of uh, some new vacuum alpha. And then you can, this is not important. You can later, real, you can easily see that it's also related to the thermophile double states. And then for a certain value of uh, alpha, some special value alpha, then it also looks like uh, uh, thermal states, even though I didn't couple to the any extra states, but they looks could be looks like a thermal state. And uh, in this case, B and C is kind of, uh, uh, it is uh, like a B in this case, uh, if I try to compare with the thermal states, uh, B is, uh, C is a kind of a purification of B, but uh, let me just skip uh, some detail. But the important thing is that uh, here, when you calculate the correlation function, so, uh, I just give the this uh, final result. This is uh, some explain the uh, what happened. But uh, when you calculate the correlation function, uh, it's very for the usual usual vacuum. It doesn't matter whether you are using the genome or not, because uh, usual in the usual vacuum vacuum. For example, if you calculate some size. 
if you calculate this one, if you even if you insert a J, vacuum, this vacuum, let's say this vacuum is invariant so that uh, it's the same as a naive vacuum, naive correlation function. So that uh, when you calculate correlation function with a vacuum, doesn't matter. So that's why in the old literature, the calculation of the correlation function is uh, no problem. It's uh, exactly a match. Uh, it's uh, okay. However, now if you study the this calculate the alpha vacuum, then it matters because uh, in alpha vacuum, J is uh, not alpha, but they flip the all the these alphas. So because of that, it's very important to using the J in a J in a product or double bracket, whatever you call it. So the the correct uh, for example, this uh, I uh, I didn't explain for detail, but uh, there is infinite many group parameter. But uh, let's say choosing the every like a group parameter is the same as alpha, then the correlation function with respect to alpha vacuum is this simple expression. It's independent of alpha, so. It's a nice expression and uh, it uh, has no problem. However, you can ask, you calculate the, this correlation function in the alpha vacuum, but uh, somehow you made a mistake and you forget to using the J in the product. What I mean is you forget, the, you forget to insert the J operator. Then what you obtain is just this kind of expression. And uh, for this uh, special value alpha, what I mean is uh, for all value of n, this is the same alpha, when the alpha is the same, then you have not only this term, you also have an extra term. This is uh, some long calculation with a naive, no, naive inner product. So what is the problem? The problem of, of this correlation function is uh, as follows. So in the field theory, this two-point function will diverge when two operators approach each other. But if they are far away, there will be no divergence. But uh, this extra term, this uh, we have, diverge when not only z to equal omega w, but uh, when z times w equal one, it also diverge, second term diverge. So that is uh, more like uh, this picture. So there, there is operate two point function between jet and omega. If even they are far away, it's not divergent. But uh, when jet approaches the one over omega, this uh, long incorrect calculation diverge. Of course, this is long calculation, so you don't have to worry about it. But the such kind of uh, phenomena happen in the digital space. In the digital space, uh, uh, people also calculate the two-point function uh, of scalar field in the digital space. And the uh, exact di same divergence appear in the digital space. In this case, in the digital space, there is an antipodal map. Antipodal map is uh, like uh, in the embedding space, uh, x goes to minus x is the, this antipodal map. So x goes to minus x in the embedding space. So that uh, this, uh, the problem, of the this well known problem in the, of the alpha vacuum in the digital space is the it diverges when the this x approaches the uh, y approaches the antipodal point of the a that was the problem this is exactly the same structure and the coefficient is actually also same structure as the long calculation of the symplectic formula so that uh, this is uh, uh, still uh, we are this is, uh, we don't have any uh, resolution for this one for the digital space, but uh, we hope that this kind of understanding of the symplectic formula may be help, help the, this uh, alpha vector problem in the digital space. So uh, let me conclude the summary. So in the higher derivative forming theory, so J inner product and the J Hermitian conjugate is considered with the passive integral and, uh, and then one has to use it and uh, it's, uh, Give the well defined theory and the uh, path integral measure or sometimes rescue the, this instability and the uh, CFD2 with a negative center charge uh, can have a, 
uh, non-negative norm state. This is uh, we show the some counter example. Up to now, I only discuss uh, quadratic theory because uh, interacting theory you have to be really careful. So, but the, in future, I want to also understand uh, this interesting case. Thank you very much for a long time. Thank you very much, Yungi. Thank, Thank you, you Yungi. Comments, questions. I see Philip has a comment. Yeah. Oh, first of all, thank you for this uh, interesting exploration. Uh, I wanted to make a few comments and then a question. Going right back to the beginning, whether you use the Noether current form of the energy momentum tensor ah, or, okay. or the metric form, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the only thing that you want to construct is the Hamiltonian, because they differ by a surface term which drops out when you calculate the integral of the energy momentum tensor. So it doesn't really matter. But you're not doing that. You're doing a deformation in which you generate a TT bar. And therefore, yes. you really have to use the uh, the one defined by the metric, because that's the correct one for coupling to gravity. And if it has the Ostrogrodsky problem, then it does. And that's uh, then you have to deal with it. I don't, I don't think that you're free to use the Noether current because its only basis for ever using it was that it gave the right Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, the, that's the comment. Um, oh, uh -huh. Okay, the second comment is um, when you, when, when Carl and I looked at the higher derivative bosonic case, we had to do two things. We had to introduce the analog of what you're calling J to get a right inner product, a correct inner product, but we also had to continue the path integral measure into the complex plane in order to get it to exist. Now you don't need to do that. And a reason, and the reason is because you're doing integration over, over Grassmann degrees ah, of freedom, yeah. and it doesn't really matter. And I okay. think I think that's why it works for you. Now the last oh, question, and mm -hmm. my last question is um going back to you introduced you the change of variable, you introduced um d2 phi as the new variable, and you showed that you ran. Um, the uh, pi bar were no longer independent. Now, uh, which part? Uh, can you say? Uh, uh, oh, no, you 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 made it. That's it. You wrote a field redefinition. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. What was the field redefinition? And then you discussed the pi and the pi bar being separate. And then you went on a little bit further to discuss uh -huh. the path integral, and you introduced uh -huh. the Jacobian. So, can you yeah. get back to that point? So that's it. Now. I mean, yeah, now, my yeah, question yeah. is this, when you have the pi and the pi bar as independent degrees of freedom, the okay. path integral that you have to have is an integral over uh, eta, eta bar, pi and pi bar. And yet the one that you showed us only with, with the Jacobian only had the eta and eta bar. So my question is, if you take the more general path integral integrate and do the integration out on the pi and the pi bar, do you come back to the one that you had where you only had the, the path integration on the eta and the eta bar? Uh, when you say pi means uh, this- uh, you, introduced it. you introduced oh. the pi and the pi bar, uh, not on that page. I think the one, go back to the, the, the page where you had the, oh dear. Uh, that's it, no constraints. Okay, so you see the phase space has eta, eta bar, pi, and pi bar. It's got four elements. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. So now I got it. The path integral has to be over eta, eta bar, pi, and pi bar. It's a four dimensional measure. Now, my question yeah. if you do the path integration over the pi and the pi bar first, will you mm -hmm. come back to the quantity that you showed us? I think it's on the next slide. Uh, if you can go forward, can you go? For, that's it. That 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 was it. The, no, you've gone too. You went too far. Go back one. Go ahead. That's it. Therefore, yeah. see see where you, that was it. You had you had the one with the, you had the one with the Jacobian. There it is. Now then, that okay. It, that one with with the Jacobian. You're only integrating mm -hmm. over the same number of degrees of freedom as you did before you made the change in variable. Yeah. Yeah. But the change in variable generates new degrees of freedom. And so yeah. what I'm asking is, is the quantity that you would like to discuss 
the one that you would get if you first did the path integration over these extra pi and pi bar degrees of freedom. Ah, I see. Or is, it, I, or is it a different problem? Uh, if I understand correctly, first of all, here I consider that this uh, Lagrangian, so that uh, this second order of kind of uh, second order of energy, but only eta appear. So this is the work. But uh, as you said, uh, you, I can go to the so called like a uh, first order of energy where not only integral over eta, and uh, you probably what you ask is uh, d phi. Yes. And, that's right. uh, there, yeah, some first order, like uh, you also introducing, for example, phi, eta, eta, yes. but something like that. Well, well, uh, well let, let, me state, let, let me state why I've asked this question. In ordinary mm -hmm. quantum mechanics, um, mm -hmm. we do the path integration over all, all paths Q, but the phase space is P and Q. So why didn't we do the integral dP dQ? And the answer is because when you do the integral dp, you get back the integral dq alone. Yeah. So you didn't have to, it didn't have to yeah. introduce dp. Yeah. So what I'm asking is in your case, mm -hmm. is that still true? Is the integral over the pi and the pi bar um, just going to, is, is it just uh, giving you back the original d a to d a to bar integral, or is it giving you a different theory? Uh, in, other words, does, in other words, in your case, does phase space matter? That's what yeah, phase, phase, phase. when you say original means uh, integral d phi, psi, free theory, right? So, or d eta. d eta so, and d pi, the way, the way you've just written it now. Yes. Okay. That, that's all I'm asking. So here, uh, as far as I understand correctly, then the, let me explain it this way. Then you have, uh, oh, sorry, pass integral, Okay. So you have pass integral over d eta, some Jacobian here, mm -hmm. and e to the minus eta. And then uh, you probably have to introduce uh, phi in a way, and in a way that uh, it, uh, it, the, Reproduce the yes so uh, because it is uh, canonical. So yeah, the question is: is that is that, is that an identity? That's I exactly think uh, that's my question. It should be I. I have to be careful, but I think uh, it's uh, in this level. I think uh, this intrusion of the phi should be. Uh, you should uh, in terms of uh, conjugate momentum in a way that it's identity. That's a lot. Well, of course, I, I, of course, that's what we'd like to have happen. But, but I'm asking you, all I'm asking is, does it happen? I didn't check, uh, strictly speaking, I didn't check uh, uh, in the past integral in the, this uh, okay. identity, but I expect what uh, one has to be careful. Every, like uh, sometimes something, was wrong, so I also understand your concern, but uh, I I didn't check rigorously. Well, I, I so. think it'll work because the Jacobian doesn't depend on pi. Uh, so. The Jacobian is just the transformation yes. of pi to d2 phi. Yeah, that's right. Jacobian. And I think is, if, uh, if the Jacobian doesn't depend on pi, then on uh, on pi, then the pi path integral is stand is the standard one. Yes, but that yeah, would be. So yeah, because uh, this is because it's linear in the field. So uh, my the tra transformation is linear in eta, so that it's okay. But uh, for example, if you do the, this one now, I think it's more, I mean, come like a Jacobian, as you said, Jacobian might depend on the eta dot, possibly, like uh, some non-trivial Jacobian. Then the, maybe, as you said, uh, it's very non-trivial when you go to the conjugate moment, uh, whether Jacobian is late or not is a complicated problem. I agree. So this for the, this kind of linear case, uh, I think it's OK. Good. More comments, more questions.
If not, uh, then let's uh, thank Yungi once more. Thank you very much, Yungi. Thank very you. Nice you. Talk. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye for... bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye bye, everyone.